agents give aids and help to the in, in an individual level. So how does it support a specific group, as you say? Madam Chair, as I told you, their intention is actually helping the individuals that they need in the nation. But for them to function, they have to get the negotiation with the government with certain amount of agency. So nece necessarily, they have to compromise empowering the resources to the government or the other. This is actually you are sharing the knowledge is about they are having a very noble idea they can actually help these, these people. Then secondly, why should they be held accountable? In general, Madam Speaker, when they see certain kind of harm, even if the harm is actually uh, grievous by the intent, uh, without having intention, we still actually punishing that action, right? Even if I don't actually have an intention, to kill or just hit the someone just by using my car. But if I just resort to then actually killing mission. or hurting the individual, we, regardless of the re uh, intention, we see the result and the harm leading to that uh, actually value. That is the principle that we have on a certain kind of criminal, <coughs> criminal aspect, any kind of harm or the rebel. Then secondly, why actually it can resort the more worsened situation? First, it actually influences the people's recognition about the humanitarian aid from the first place. When the war happens between a different ethnic group, or the war happens between the citizens and the government, when they see that their humanitarian aid yeah, yeah. is actually given to specific group, specific government, or an oppressive agency in that nation, the citizens get worsened, and that kind of uh, effective uh, aid cannot be happened at the end. But secondly, other international society, actually perspective can be changed by this. Why? First, oppressive government, when you, when you see the imagine situation where the certain position, their humanitarian aid, they are giving the aid to the a small, a certain group of the people, then you will acknowledge, right, that, oh, that group of the people need the help, and that is actually justifiable. That's why humanitarian aid is actually helping these people. Then the uh, international society perspective for the oppressive regime or the oppressive agency actually become positive and they think their oppressive regime's action is justifiable at the end. And secondly, you see that the other international organization who is giving them the aid or resources will be suspect about their action. And then, so at, at the end, we don't see any effective measure actually given by the humanitarian aid. If they worsen the situation, they have, they have to be held accountable. I'm very proud to propose. They're stepping in to help people, the dying people, these people who have, they're, they, 
basically like infringe upon. And also today, they talked about, well, these negotiations with tyrant states and it's not never gonna happen, there's no permission occurring. Let's look at this one. We under, no, thank you, man. We understand that rogue states are rogue states. Tyrants are tyrants. Yes, that permission is not gonna come. But how does it happen in, no, thank you, sir. How does it happen in reality when these international humanitarian agencies step in? They don't actually look for permission. It's under international governance, called something called the UN. That's how they act. They don't actually look for some kind of negotiation with a particular nation that they're looking to help the dying so, people. No, thank you, sir. And they also said, today from opening government, about how only certain groups, only certain parties are getting the help. Well, when you, as, as I told you from opening opposition, it's these humanitarian agencies look at it from an individual level, helping any persons who are in their dangerous, destitute of destruction. And this is why we have what we have from opening opposition. Yes, sir. Okay, now you said there is no bad intention, right? But these guys know if they give the, the power to these figures, the people is going to be worse, right? But these guys been doing this to make an aid sir. because Thank they you, want sir. to make their life better than before. Thank you, sir. They want that message. Thank you, sir. We understand that from human humanitarian agencies, what we're saying is they work on a passive level. They look at an individual level. And any person that needs help, any person, as I said, in their destitute of destruction, in their danger, that's where the humanitarian agency stands on to help these people who are in need, not just helping some kind of political group or some kind of public interest of some kind of little party of a group. And that is why we must be saying today that this, this is what we need. Now, to look at the characteristics of humanitarian agencies. Over the years, through history, these, these international humanitarian agencies have been the only entities that have been able to actually deal with the issue and prevent the further exacerbation of issues. For example, no, thank you, ma'am. The Red Cross stepping into the sticky situation, especially look at like Korea's case, to staunch the bleeding and actually provide point essential assistance. We ask you this question. Who else did? Who else than these international humanitarian agencies actually, no thank you, man, actually arrived on the scene to help out? No, we look at it this way. They are not, they are, humanitarian agencies, international humanitarian agencies are third parties. They're not the personal actors. And they don't have the capacity or the ability to solve this problem on its own. But what are they? They are the helping hand. They are the helping hand that steps in to help these situations to prevent the further exacerbation of the, the deprivation of human life. And that is why they're stepping in to help these people on an individual level. No thank you, ma'am. Now, so look at it this way. Now, uh, the accountability issue, the accountability issue. These humanitarian agencies are, new, are the neutral third party, as, we, as they said. So they should be protected on this idea, and the neutrality must be ensured. Humanitarian, in, humanitarian agencies are watchdogs of certain problems that we have, and situations of the human, the human rights crises that we have, the mass genocide, and the mass health problems that are created. So, in the status quo, we must have this neutrality for the existence of them to actually do their part and fulfill their role. Why bind them to this accountability and prevent them from actually doing their role in our society and helping out? No, thank you, ma'am. We are saying that we must protect this neutrality and we must not bind them to the accountability, somehow make them feel responsible and actually block them from actually having any kind of idea of being the third party, of being a helping hand. The simple fact that we gave you, they're not the persons who created the conflict zone in the first place. They're not the personal persons. They're actually the third party, no thank you, no, the third party coming from the outside and lending a helping hand to actually deal with this situation. And they are the only people, as I gave you, yes ma'am? Yes, now, as I told you, they don't ask, as I told you in my rebuttal, these humanitarian agencies don't actually go to countries and ask for permission, because that doesn't work. These humanitarian agencies, international organizations, are regulated by what we call the United Nations and other international society, and that is where this neutrality comes from. That's what, no thank you, of course, if these international agencies go around creating havoc and doing their problems, the UN and these other entities actually look into the problems, look for the practicality of the issue, the feasibility of, and the efficiency of how these nations, how these international organizations are working, so there's no problem. And as she asked, who holds them in check? Yes, these international society and the UN. So as we gave you, again, back to my example about Korea, who actually wanted to step into that issue? Nobody wanted to step in. But yes, we had the Red Cross who could actually step in and provide some kind of stability, provide some kind of band-aid for the bleeding, not just let it keep bleeding until it breaks down. No? So we needed that person, to actually, that party to step in, to go thank you, that, to actually counteract against the problems that we had in that situation. And in the case that we did not have that party to enter in, we would have seen a much more destructive catastrophe that we, nobody wanted to see. And that is why we're saying that we should have these humanitarian agencies be allowed to step in and we don't hold them accountable. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, from opening opposition, we basically gave you the characterization of humanitarian agencies, international agencies, and what they should do. And the role, what they do, how they're a third party and a helping hand, and how they should actually be able to step into these situations, as they're the only ones who actually want to do it, and they're the only ones who can do it. And secondly, on the idea of accountability. How 
they should not be placed on this burden for the responsibility, as they should be neutral, and their roles should be protected, not binding them to some kind of neutral, uh, unneutral responsibility. And as is raised in the POI, who holds them in check? International society, the UN, as they're regulated by this. And as Oakland government constantly said, you can't get some kind of permission from rogue states in France. Yeah. We know Qaddafi was a tyrant that would never uh, communicate. We know these tyrants never communicated. But we never say that the international agencies actually go there trying to create some kind of communication, doing some futile effort to actually make some sense for these people. They get the permission as they're regulated from the UN, from international society, international agencies. And this is where the governance of actually these United Nations agencies are approved. And this is how it occurs in state status quo. And this is why we're saying that we believe that human humanitarian agencies not be held accountable in the conference notes. And my second speaker will actually come up to the podium today and talk to you about why we shouldn't do this on the future action, on how this will just bind humanitarian agencies from not being wanted, not being able to step in, not wanting to step in anymore, as they'll be held under so super accountability that their every single action will be held up by a watchdog, that they'll watch their every step and not actually take any action to help out our situation. So in the case that we have more crisis in state status quo, we will not have some Red Cross stepping in to solve a problem like that player we had so many years ago. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
argument, right? Because you first, because I never understand the argument. I think that's the problem. Actually. First argument, why our policy better utilize capital and manpower? Because humanitarian agency and religious agency compete in each other, right? They won't expand their power. They say, my agency is better than his agency. That is why they never analyze, they never thinking about bad behavior, some kind of collateral damages. They just go any places. And if go there, some people say, you must pay the money. They willingly pay the money. Why? Because that is the thing, increase their fame, right? My agency better than your agency. Maybe Christian, this is my life, right? God gave me this mission. I must spread my Christianity. This is the problem. They never concerned about results of their actions. I think this is the problem. But in our policy, we make them accountable, right? You can't be afraid in India anymore. You, you will be cut every benefit you get from the UN and other agencies. They will stop. But the thing is, the motivation they, they people go there is not in decrease, right? right? They have motivated themselves. They want self satisfied. Then what is the result? They will analyze and thinking a lot more about the result. If I go there, I'm helping this government or not. If I go there places, I'm helping this government or not. And if they calculate and modify the best way, then they can go there. The ideas that you guys want to talk about, there is no more humanitarian agency, cannot be sent in today's space. Because we never touch on, we never touch motivation these agencies have. They will go to countries like Korea, Sorry. because even if you go to Korea, and South Korea, North Korea situation, you never empower one specific government. You just go there helping the people. I think this is a good idea, because motivation is there, people just go there. But that motivation will be deterred if your action is going to bring harm to that countries. I think this is a good idea. Why this is good? Because if you make the war prolonged and longer war, that harms the citizen of that countries. The purpose of the humanitarian aid, which is clearly came from my first speaker, which is never adequately rebutted by these guys, will be there and more power play and more better way, more cleaner way. So there is no worrying about my action is going to worsen the situation. My policy is way more better than their policy. If you prolong the war, that cost must be um that cost is going to taken by the citizen. Humanitarian agents agency is never get accountability. I think that is the problem. Madam Speaker, what have I told you today? We clearly give them ideas, right? Good intention cannot be a reason to exempt. Maybe less punishment, but that is not sent in today's space. And we clearly give you the idea. Sometimes these guys have a bad intention, self-satisfaction. That is go against on purpose of a humanitarian agency. I think that is the problem. And we clearly said, right, there is no dramatic lose of number of humanitarian agents. Even if there's a lose of numbers, they will go to the right place. That is the thing we want to talk about in today's debate. Even if there are hundreds and thousands of humanitarian agencies in African nations, if that agency never has the citizen who is living on the street, that agency is not fulfilling their purpose. That is why we don't have to give an exam, because your action and self-satisfaction clearly killing the people. I think that is really a problem in today's debate. At the end of the day, you must um, analyze the debate who gives you a better standard. Open government gives you a better standard, intention cannot be a reason, and there is benefit. For those reasons, a very proud support. <laughs> Thank you. 
to analysis of the rebuttals that the government side has put up here today. Number one, consider the harm that they will see. Now, yeah. basically, it says that humanitarian agencies stepping uh, going into our country and basically helping these three people prolonging the war. And this is that because war is prolonged. Now, number one, do we really want innocent people because of these political groups fighting keep on dying because at least one group has to somehow be defeated in order for one side to win? Now, we believe that humanitarian agencies are there to help people, innocent people who didn't in, aren't involved in these political fights to be safe and to be protected with their basic fundamental human rights, the right to live and rights for home, so on and so forth. And we believe these humanitarian, uh, these human rights should be and can only be protected as my, uh, as our deed of office has proven to you, right. can only be protected by these humanitarian agencies. And because of so, no, uh, because of so, we believe that we don't want everyone to die. Uh, we don't want one side to die. For example, for the entire government, uh, entire op oppression group to die, just because one side has to win. We believe that humanitarian agencies, as we prove to you, is the third party who can help these people in a yeah. different yeah. level. Second of all, consider the payment. Now, they basically said that governmental or uh, non-governmental organizations, the humanitarian agencies, are paying these governments in order to give them the help. However, now I have a confusion here. Yeah. Are they saying that are they are illegally bribing these governments in order mm -hmm. to get into their government, or are they saying that they're helping the government in order to, you know, for example, as such as South Korean giving North Korean government, um, uh, such as UNICEF giving rice to North Korean government. So we're really confused of the illeg uh, illegality of this payment that they're supposedly have said. Now consider the illegal payment. It's, I don't think this is a controversy because if something is illegally going on, it of course should be held liable and should be con uh, um, should. should be controlled in the international um, legal system. However, if there's something illegal, we believe that we have a, a con con uh, we have a profound mechanism to take advantage of them, which can actually make them to be beneficial to to actually help the people who are in in need in the individual <coughs> level might be uh, doesn't are uh, disregarding what, what their political agenda is. So that is why we believe that these humanitarian agencies should not be uh, should not be accountable in this conflict zone. Now, second analysis is considering considering the self satisfaction about basically that these humanitarian agencies are going in there for self satisfaction. Now, we're not disagreeing to that. What we're saying is that of course all humanitarian agencies and include all humanitarian aid are based on what is called self satisfaction for these people, which is basically a love for humanity. That the yeah. all all the other international organizations, maybe humanitarian agency or what or not what not, they're based on their satisfaction on their pursuit and on their respect on love for humanity as corny as it sounds. So what we basically believe, we don't believe this love for humanity and self-satisfaction of humanitarian agency and its members who are participating in order to help these people in hand is something bad. We believe that self-satisfaction actually is something that they gain by promoting and by exercising their help in there. They're basically saying, so in, for example, they're basically saying any kind of donation that people would make because they're getting a self-satisfaction by donating the money, that it's somehow right. bad, but we don't believe so yet. Okay, this debate is not about there is a problem or not. This debate is about if there is a problem, humanitarian agency should be accountable or not. Yeah. You can't yeah. portray the debate as there is no problem. We're saying that self, self having the self-satisfaction has no problem whatsoever as long as it gives the help to the people. Yeah. And in my previous analysis of the rebuttal, I've given you a profound reason why this basically helped these people disregarding their political agenda or yeah. the reason of conflict might, might be religion or whatever reason is that these people need help and these humanitarian agencies <coughs> are the ones who are giving them the help that they need. Now, moving on to my uh, argument considering how it further will by, pass, by believing that humanitarian agencies should be accountable in conflict zones, basically prevents a further uh, effective role of humanitarian agency. How Madam Speaker, basically, um, in a conflict zone, these humanitarian agencies in also consisted of capital investment and also the individual who are participating in there risking their lives because it's a conflict zone to go in there and give the help they need.
thing is, they, they, um, this basically um, prevents, as, as we told you, a passive, is, is a passive action of the food, the aid, the medicine that goes to it. So basically, by burdening them, because they're basically have no substantial benefit except what they call self-satisfaction, any kind of economic benefit that they derive from it, we believe that burdening them with this sort of accountability basically will further prevent them from participating in to giving help to these conflict zones. We believe that humanitarian aid, aid agencies' motive itself is very vulnerable, that because human nature is to you know, go for a profit, uh, their noble thoughts about you know, love or humanity and how we should care for the vulnerable itself is very fragile. And we don't want this burden to break that uh, break that break that vulnerability and prevent further prevent these humanitarian agencies from giving the help that they need for these people. Therefore, because we believe that humanitarian agencies are the only entity, the only neutral third party who can give to the help that they need in the individual level, we're proud to oppose. Thank you. Madam Speaker, it's quite straightforward that the purpose of humanitarian agency is to successfully help out individuals yeah, yeah, who yeah. actually need help. So for fulfilling this job completely, they have taken responsibility as to what they have done wrong. That's our stance and yeah, that's yeah. our point. We can see the side of government, <coughs> the side of op uh, opening side, they said that the bad intention, such as like government exploitation, we see that's also problematic. Furthermore, we are not talking about more focusing on even if they have a good intention, if it results in negative effect, they have to take a responsibility, such as in case like rad radicals go into somewhere and unintentionally switching the blood, we see that's also problematic and they have to take a responsibility regarding this. My extension is going to be that way. Before going to my substantial extension, I want to briefly rebut on the side of opposition. The first rebuttal is about the, like, they are totally fine because they are aiding the, like, any other people. Firstly, we have say, uh, we say, humanitarian agency is not totally outlawed by UN or any other entity. Why, we're gonna elaborate it further. Why it's very tough and hard in the status quo? Why? Because of the attributes of the humanitarian agency itself. And give a, uh, just, we want to ask inside of opposition, give us any example they can actually thoroughly make a check and balance system. On that, no. Uh, second of all, no thank you. I also want to talk about the illegal payment that came from the side of the government. But we see that the bribes to the government, like if, if we don't actually can see that in the like boundary of law, we, we also agree that it exists. So because we don't think that we have like perfectly fine check and balance system, it goes wrong. And the thirdly, no thank you. The, the thing that side of opposition kept on talking about is because they have a benefit to the some like third world and in society, it's totally okay whatever they do. But what we say is, even if it has a positive impact, impact in some sense, they have to take a responsibility. No exception. Okay. Yes. Okay. The, the problem with your bench is that all of the problems that you mentioned is not caused by humanitarian agencies, yeah. but it's a problem caused by yeah. oppressive regimes itself. No, we don't think so. Our point, as I mentioned before, even if they have a good intention, they did a wrong thing. They have to take yeah. a responsibility. <laughs> That's the point. It's totally different thinking. Okay. My first extension is gonna be the attributes of uh, no thank you humanitarian agency. I want to more focus on humanitarian agency itself. 
And secondly, I want to also as an extension talk about the long-term benefit. Why taking a responsibility makes a better humanitarian agency in the long run and make a better society and globe in the long run. Okay, no thank you. Let's go to the first extension, the attributes of humanitarian agencies. They give a hand, the attributes and characteristics of humanitarian agencies, <laughs> giving a hand to the third world or complex job. So what they have done, they did a positive job. So how about this, or, or like, it, so the, the thing is, because of those kinds of attributes, international society agrees upon to, about their activity, because they aid to others, like others will help out or feed others spontaneously. Yeah. So Red Cross, like such as like Red 